At the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, America's Joan Benoit unforgettably won the first women's Olympic marathon. Carlos Lopez of Portugal won the men's marathon at age 37. Mayor Tom Bradley, inspired, thought an annual LA marathon would be a great idea, like the world-class marathons in New York City and Chicago. Rights to organize a mass marathon went to Bradley crony Bill Burke, whose wife was another powerful politician, L.A. County Supervisor Yvonne Brathwaite Burke. In March 1986, the first L.A. marathon. I was one of the 7,581 finishers, only 42 minutes behind women's winner Nancy Dietz. We finished outside the Coliseum, almost like the 1984 Olympians. Over the decades, under sponsors from Coke and Kodak to Honda, and currently ASICS, the Japanese athletic gear company, the marathon became an L.A. tradition, despite the city's rolling terrain and warm weather, which can handicap runners. By 1996, the Coliseum connection was replaced by loop courses starting and ending downtown. The goal was a flatter course, enabling a men's winning time below 2 hours 10 minutes, attracting bigger name competitors. One year, the race started way up at Universal Studios. L.A. Dodgers owner Frank McCourt bought the marathon rights in 2008. In 2010, he introduced a Dodger Stadium start and a route through the cities of West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, and Seaside Santa Monica. The Stadium to the Sea idea has proved a solid success in every way. Runners. In rainy and cool conditions in 2011, Marcos Genetti of Ethiopia set an astounding race record of 2 hours, 6 minutes, 35 seconds. Russia's Lydia Grigorieva holds the women's race record, 2 hours, 25 minutes, 10 seconds. I had completed the LA Marathon five times, with a personal best of 3 hours, 18 minutes, 42 seconds. In five other years, I did half the course as a training run. In 1989, I finished hand-in-hand -hand with my twin brother, Lawrence Kirk. As of 2013, my 25 marathon finishers medals included these from Los Angeles, the last of them from 2002. After the past four years as a race weekend media relations volunteer, I gave in to the appeal and the challenge of the 2014 Stadium to the Sea course. I trained for three months in cool winter weather. As the race neared, it was time to go downtown to the Marathon's Runner's Expo at the LA Convention Center to pick up my numbered bib and t-shirt and to browse the commercial offerings in the aisles. The Marathon sold out its 25,000 slots for the second year in a row at prices up to $190 for late entrance. The great marathon champion Dina Castor was signing posters, and on the way out, runners were reminded to set clocks ahead for daylight savings time so they would not be late for the start. In pre-dawn darkness, I lined up with hundreds of others to board shuttle buses from near the Santa Monica finish line to the Dodger Stadium start. Many of us wondered if we should have stayed home. The forecast was for heat, ranging into the high 70s at the finish line. Though Frank McCourt no longer owns the Dodgers, he still has a share in the parking lots, so the baseball team still lets the marathoners into the stadium to fill the nervous hours until the starting gun. 
Some 5,000 runners are kids in Honda vests from Students Run LA. What is this thing and what are you doing oh, with it? It's my phone. I'm listening to the book while I'm running. <laughs> Why? Just to keep myself distracted. At sunrise, the great mass of runners lines up in McCourt's parking lot. My modest goal is to beat five hours, so I jam myself near the 11 minute per mile pace sign. Of athletes out here, chairs, good luck on your adventure. Wearing shoes I've never even seen before. Look at that. Got the mic and say, you remember. Weather at the 7.25 a.m. start, 57 degrees, partly cloudy. Acceptable as long as the clouds last, but how long will they last? Just past the Dolby Theater of the Oscar telecast and Grauman's Chinese Theater, the sun comes fully out and the day heats up, as predicted, with few breezes.
The course profile with a net drop of 430 feet can be misleading. Long LA streets like Sunset and Santa Monica boulevards have plenty of gradual uphills to bedevil tiring runners. At mile 18, I hit the wall. Despite taking two leaves, I start walking with a long, hot 8.2 miles to go. And coming up an impossibly long and steep hill in the Veterans Administration grounds. Even for strong runners, it's the peak point in the race. Next, in Brentwood and Santa Monica, beautiful San Vicente Boulevard, a popular running path. I am forced to walk it. Then we turn down Ocean Avenue, the Pacific off to our right, for the home stretch. The sun is really bearing down now. Amane Gobena and Gabo Burka of Ethiopia win within 41 seconds of each other at 2 hours 10 minutes. At a disappointing 5 hours 49 minutes, I cross the finish line, trying to at least look like a runner. In staggering heat and a chaotic scene at the family reunion area, I miss connections with my wife and painfully walk home. Three more miles. Not the best day, but I did not collapse, I did not drop out, and in the end I got what I trained for. At age 74, my 26th, and I swear the last, marathon medal.